Besides prevention, the VIDC is also interested in exploring the new developments and trends within the field of human trafficking, such as cyber trafficking. And we are also dealing with the investigation of the root causes of human trafficking, such as the socioeconomic inequality between countries of destination and of origin, the international division of labor, the feminization of poverty, and, of course, gender inequality. In order to analyze these root causes, human trafficking has to be seen in a global context, recognizing the fact that it's closely interlinked with power and dependence relationships. Moreover, it's imperative to address human trafficking as a phenomenon that is interrelated with migration, which is manifested in the intersection of economic, social, and political developments determined by gender, ethnicity, and class inequality. So restrictive immigration and asylum laws will not prevent people from cross borders. On the contrary, it will rather promote human trafficking by enhancing the power of exploiters. The role of migrant workers from the South or the East is generally uh, be seen by filling labor shortages in the EU, mostly in the health and cleaning sector, but also in domestic services. And in this perspective, women are not only seen as compliant and cheap workers, but they are also served for the entertainment and regeneration of men. So women are reduced to the role of an undemanding wife, a housekeeper, or even to the function of an exploitable and available ob object of men's desire. To sum up, I would like to stress that for the elaboration and implementation of anti-trafficking measures, it is indispensable to analyze human trafficking in the context of international and gender-related labor division. Uh, Mr. Sicuto will, among other things, explain how exactly um, the internet is used um, by traffickers, how recruitment of potential vic victims work, what forms of exploitation occur in the context of cyber trafficking, and how racist and sexist stereotypes are produced in this context. And to explore the broad field of cyber trafficking, we have decided to take a closer look at the mail order bride industry and its possible connections to human trafficking. And we know that the uh, mail order bride industry is a very complex um, concept where interrelations between human trafficking um, can exist. Raise awareness from uh, the very, very early age at kindergartens. Is it possible to do that? Because it's a matter of mentality and it's a case of indifference. When we are talking about trafficking, for me, the major issue we have to fight against is indifference. We are living in societies that are so selfish. We don't care about who lives next door, what happened. The example that um, um, our uh, colleague from uh, the Austrian police gave, that you pass every day from people that are begging, etc., but maybe it crossed our minds that they are victims of trafficking, but we don't report. We don't care. So first, fight indifference. Uh, second, educate boys that they should respect girls and women and not treat them as objects. This is related to the stereotypes and to uh, uh, why uh, we have so much prevalence in sexual trafficking. About indifference and solidarity, I know this doesn't refer to the question, I'll go back to it, but I think it's important to keep in mind that people people try not to be indifferent and they try to raise awareness in the Western world. When I go back to Ukraine or visit my parents in Russia, I feel like people don't care about those things. Some girls that I, that I met uh, who were involved in the male or the bride industry actually found it cool. They get beautiful pictures, they're, they're becoming famous, uh, everyone can visit their page in the, in the, in the, in the marriage agency website. So uh, I think th there should be more common, um, common awareness raising, not only in the West, but also sort of in, in the East, and I find it very important.